right, we are back. My next guest, listen to this. He has climbed and snowboarded down the highest peaks on six of the Earth's seven continents. Here he is snowboarding down Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Now there's just one mountain left, Mount Everest, which he plans to conquer this summer. Please welcome extreme snowboarder Stephen Koch. Do I have questions for you? First of all, you want to climb what everyone agrees is the most dangerous and scariest mountain in the world and then snowboard down. Why? Because I, it's in, literally it's a natural progression for me. I started snowboarding 15 years ago. Right. And climbing to snowboard high, high routes in the Tetons. Right. And then started doing the seven summits and Everest is the highest of the seven summits. But why not wait till they build a lift? Because eventually, <laughs> eventually there'll be a T-bar or something going up there. You can get cocoa halfway. I mean, you're going to climb the mountain, which most everyone agrees is extremely dangerous, and then snowboard down. And also, you're not bringing oxygen. Most people who do this, uh, climb Mount Everest, bring oxygen. Air is so thin up top, and you're going to do it without oxygen. It sounds like you're, you're just making the, the odds impossibly high. Well, it, Everest has been climbed several times without oxygen. Mm -hmm. So the precedent has already been set that way. Right. It's actually been skied without oxygen, snowboarded without oxygen. Oh, so you're saying, so someone has snowboarded Everest before. Yes. And how's that person doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them's alive and, and one of them died trying to snowboard, actually. I mean, people are laughing at that, well, which... <laughs> It's weird, but it, I kind of understand it because you're saying, well, you know, two people did it and only one died. I mean, when I hear odds like that, you know, if before I got on an airline, they're like, you got a 50-50 shot. I'm like, oh, all right, I think I'll walk it. You know, uh, where did you get the idea that you could do this? Where did you, where did, where did, uh, to snowboard down a mountain like this? Well, the, the people who snowboarded it before, I believe, got it through experience, you know, and through, you know, standing on the shoulders of the people who went before them. There must be one person who first went, climbed a mountain and then it was time to climb down and they went down a slightly different way. Well, in, in 1986, uh, two Swiss gentlemen climbed Everest in a couple days and then butt glissaded down in, in like five hours. And butt glissaded means sliding on a controlled manner. I got the... <laughs> I actually, I got the butt part. I'm... <laughs> I was like, so you're saying that they were on the way down, and was that an accident? Did one of them just fall and then shot down the mountain on his ass and then was like, huh, I just butt glissaded. Because where I'm from, that's falling on your ass and riding all the right. way down. Well, that's probably how it originally how it happened. started, but, but these guys are professional. It was professional. <laughs> they are professional butt glissaders. They're not just some boobs. Uh, are, you, are you ever going to think of your, mic, your microphone the same way after Kim was stroking it? <laughs> it has not been out of my mind since she's <laughs> actually not listening to a thing you're saying. Oh, 50% chance of dying. Well, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that all about? I don't know. Uh, you don't want to know. The air's thin where I am. Trust me. <laughs> um, you, uh, you, al you, uh, you almost died in avalanche once, you know, and, and we don't actually have time to get into the specifics, but it was a pretty serious, you got hit by an avalanche and you were almost killed once. Correct. It enables you to go back after something like that. Short memory of pain. Are you being serious? Yeah, totally serious. Well, I healed from my injuries. I was able to come back after many surgeries and, and rehab with great people. And, uh, and so it's simply that you have I a short memory for that experience. Because <laughs> well, you could try a post-it note. Is what I mean. <laughs> you know? Memo to self. Almost killed. No more mountain stuff. That's interesting, though. Is there anything that you fear? Because you seem to me like if you could do this, that you would be a fearless person. What do you fear? What do I fear? 
a lot of things actually. Really? So yeah. there are things that scare you. Give yeah, us an example. There are. Wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Um, being in, in, you know, public speaking. Breaking up. So, with so to you, I'm just an embarrassed. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. We live out on the edge, Stephen. <laughs> You'll never know what it's like. <laughs> Only me and Bessie Lou know what it's. Like. Yeah, don't touch that! <laughs> you can't touch that! Well, when you gave it a, a, a she name... What do you think it says? Canada? Year. Come on! I mean, if you called it Richard... Or think something. back to monologue, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, if you want to know more about Stephen's Seven Summit Quest and keep up with his progress on Everest this summer, check out stephenkoch.com and sobebev.com. I really like you, so I wish you the best. And I hope that if this all works out well for you, you'll come back and tell us what happened. Well, thank you. I'd like Very that. cool to have you here. Thanks. Stephen Koch, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. That was great. That was great.